Hi, Tim Two Wheels here, and on this how-to video, I'm going to be applying the vinyl tank wraps to my GS Adventure from Signature Custom Designs. So stick around and we'll get started right after this. So many of you may have seen some of the cool applications and wraps that people have put on bikes. Uh, I've been experimenting here lately. I, I recently applied uh, vinyl wrapping to my panniers the, and the top box and it turned out great. I've been, I was very happy with it. So they got me thinking. I've seen some pretty cool designs. Uh, my bike has the, the gray tank like many of the GS's and many of the late model GS's and GS Adventures uh, that looks like this. But I'd like to have something with a little more color to it. Signature Custom Designs is out of Cyprus, and they make a lot of different design styles for your bike. Now they have everything from simple decals to cover up certain areas of the bike to full wrap kits and pannier kits and everything else. So I, I went on Signature Custom Designs website, SignatureCD.com, and ordered it. And uh, uh, about a week or so later, it showed up in a tube like this. So the decals actually look like this, or the vinyl wrap. Now this particular style does require that you remove uh, the plastic trim around the tank. So that takes a little more work and it also requires some trimming and uh, a little more complex application. This one is rated at a medium difficulty. They do sell kits that can apply onto the tank and don't require you to remove any parts. You just simply apply it to your tank as it is and they look pretty cool. So you get to pick which one you wanted. I wanted this kit to do two things. <laughs> one, to make the bike look better. And two, to provide protection to the sides of the tank. Now I know there's the knee pads and rubber pads that you can stick on the side, but it still leaves part of the tank exposed. And yes, there are clear vinyl wraps that you can put on the tank if you still want the natural uh, OEM color to show through. But what I wanted was something to give it a little more pop and honestly to make the bike stand out from a lot of the other uh, GS adventures that are out there. So I'm really excited about this project and looking forward to getting started. So I'm going to step you through the application process and then show you what it looks like afterwards. Uh, it might get a little lengthy, but I want to show you the detail and any gotchas that I run into in case you decide you want to do this to your bike. Hopefully it'll give you the confidence and let you see um, what it takes to install. Now I will say that Signature Custom Designs has a lot of good videos on YouTube showing the application of many of their different kits for panniers, the bikes, uh, a lot of different designs. So if you're curious about a different design, please take a look at what they have to offer on their installation videos. So enough talk, let's go ahead and get started with this installation. So to save time, I'm going to fast forward through the removal of the plastics, uh, just removing the, the, the T25 screws, uh, two at the bottom of the tank near the seat, two here at the top and under the door. And then there's uh, two more in the front, uh, right behind the handlebars. And then there's one uh, larger in the, in the middle, uh, remove those. I found it helpful to use a longer extension here just because of the location and the handlebars to, to remove this screw. And now just to pull that top section off and now to start working on the, the side panels. Uh, as I'm removing these screws, you'll notice I'm putting these in a piece of cardboard. It's very helpful to keep the location uh, on the BMWs, uh, even though they're all T25s, um, they may have different lengths or they may have a different, uh, different depth spacer at the top of the screw. So I find it helpful just to make sure that you remove them and, and I punch them in a piece of cardboard and that way I can put them right back in the same location. And the one inside the upper crash bar removal here, it's very helpful to uh, have a longer uh, Torx bit to get in there. And then I'm just removing the one at the bottom here. And uh, then I'll gently let this hang, not stressing the, uh, the light wire too much. And then finish removing the remainder of the screws. 
there's a lot of screws that hold these plastics on. Uh, and again, it's, it's important to uh, remember to keep them, remember where they came out of. Now this section, there's a couple behind uh, inside the radiator, uh, where the radiator is. Um, so make sure you get both of those out. Again, refer to a service manual to make sure you're getting uh, all of the screws out. It's, a, it's an easy way. And then one last screw for this side panel and it should pop right off. Now the last section to remove is this uh, gunmetal gray piece that's uh, right at the front of the tank. And there's just a couple of screws here, uh, one at the bottom, and then this plastic plug that you pull the head out. Uh, just work with it and get it pulled out, then it'll release the pin and uh, comes off just like that. So now that we've got all the shrouds and everything off, it's time to clean the tank. Signature Custom Designs recommends in the instructions using 80% isopropyl alcohol to clean this. I have a, um, this is a, a mix that I use for other vinyl applications. It's a 50-50 alcohol water mix. Uh, and it's it's worked well. So you want to clean the surface of the tank to make sure that We just want the tank clean without any um, Any road grime or oils or any sort of residue on here. That's very important to get the vinyl to stick I've hit it with one application. I'm gonna do it again just to make sure Now if it hasn't been obvious the reason we took the trim off is because this particular decal, and this is the one for the left side here, um, there is a left and a right, you have to be careful. Uh, when you put these on, there's an alignment mark right here, this white mark at the bottom. And essentially you line it up with this uh, screw hole down here, this screw clip at the bottom. Uh, so we'll go through getting it positioned, but I just want to show you the, the decal or the vinyl cut is much bigger than what you need and it's going to go beyond where uh, the uh, shrouds cover. That's the reason we took those off because this is a complete, this gives you complete coverage on the exposed tank. Uh, so we'll get it positioned and then work it, um, tape it, and then start to apply. So I noticed that the um, instruction or the video on the signature website and on YouTube uh, shows this going on as a dry application. Uh, and by that, I mean, there's uh, once the tank is cleaned, he's lining it up and then starts to work it out like I've done in other vinyl. So the instructions that came with this kit specifically state wet application. Uh, I don't know if that's required. The other instruction sheet that came with it gives you the instructions for a wet application, but also for a dry application. For the wet application, basically, they're calling for using uh, Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo, about 5% mix with 95% water in a bottle, and that's exactly what this is. It calls to wet your fingers and keep it wet when handling the adhesive keeping both surfaces of the decal wet, as well as your fingertips when handling it with this uh, baby shampoo water mixture, uh, and then squeegeeing it out. Now, speaking of squeegee, they recommend using a soft squeegee like this, not the hard side, and uh, this is uh, basically a felt, or I'm sorry, like a suede type covering on this squeegee, or using your fingers and a microfiber cloth if you don't have a squeegee. So at this point, I think I'm going to start and experiment a little bit with uh, wet application and see how that works out. Uh, since that is the method that is called for on the printed instructions with this, uh, this particular set. So working here just uh, to get this lined up, obviously the bottom of your tank is, is right here and that's really what you want to kind of line this surface up parallel. I'm getting the, um, the index mark. Uh, lined up here as well with that screw hole and then getting the surface. Now you can kind of feel around and feel the edges. This is going to wrap up. This is going to go up here. That'll be tucked up under. There's the trim piece that goes back on the bottom that'll cover up some of this other, but just getting it as, as straight and level. So I'm just tearing off a piece of um, tape and I'm just going to tack this here for right now to hold it. The index mark is here. 
keep that exposed. And I'm just going to tack it in place and just kind of take a look at it right now. I think that's good. And the bottom of our GS Impression logo is going to be straight right above, again, the G there. And then being careful not to I don't want to scratch the tank, but I do want to uh, Okay, now I'm going to wet the the back side of the tank as well as the uh, back side of the vinyl. Start working the logo from the bottom up so that any air pockets kind of work out of it. I don't like this wet application, I'll be honest with you. I've worked with vinyl and I would prefer to work it dry. So I'm keep working it and pressing it here because since it's a wet application, it's just, it doesn't feel like it wants to stick and adhere like a dry application would. Yeah, that's looking nicer, much nicer. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. Uh, it's, it, the key here is just, uh, first of all, I think I had too much uh, of the wetting solution, the soapy mix on here, as I stated before. I found it worked much better just using it dry or drier and just taking your time. Uh, the squeegee was helpful, but honestly, I think it went on much better just using my fingers and, and then stretching the vinyl as needed. Uh, here I'm using a little heat gun uh, just to kind of uh, damp or soften the vinyl and it helped get around some of the more complex curves. Uh, so you'll find that helps. Uh, you can just use a household hair dryer or if you have a heat gun, uh, that'll, that'll work too. Again, the key is just taking your time. Well, here it is all back together. Uh, with the, have the right side done now as well and all the trim work back on the bike. And I think it looks uh, great, in my opinion. Uh, I'll tell you, the vinyl uh, second side went on a lot easier by using the dry application method. Um, it just stuck a lot better and is a lot smoother. So much happier. So I highly recommend if you do this to not do the wet application method, uh, but do the uh, dry application method. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. It, this is on there like paint. It's a nice matte finish. It'll protect the original paint of my tank from scratches on the knees and things like that. Uh, and then if I ever decide to take it off, it just peels right off and I'm back to brand new. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. If you decide to do this uh, to your bike, this is Tim Two Wheels and thanks for watching.